Hello and welcome to Billy Ho Sports. Uh, we are beginning the run of Derby preps that can vault any of these horses right up to the top of our leaderboard with a huge effort. So this preview is going to be Turfway Park, Florence, Kentucky, 90 minutes northeast of my location, Jeff Ruby Stakes. It's worth a juicy 100 medium rare points to the winner, the winner, winner steak dinner. And uh, you can re uh, review all the previous prep races in my playlist. Uh, also, remember, subscribe to the channel. Throw that like up there. Uh, in the comments, who you got for the prime cut in the Jeff Ruby? And uh, we're going to get right on to it. Let's go. Okay, we're going to start off with uh, number one freedom principle. Uh, just real quick, I was a bit uh, put off that either Epic Ride or Encino didn't get into this uh, race after coming off of their efforts previously in the uh, Matt uh, Battaglia. So I'm not sure what I'm John Battaglia. I'm sorry. Matt's the, the son, but anyway, uh, it is what it is. I guess they figured they did enough. So freedom principle. Number one, Jose Garofalo is the trainer. Adam uh, Beschiza will ride. Ran well on the all-weather Gulfstream surface in the past, but speed figures are a little bit too low, so I'm going to go ahead and pass on that one. Stick around because we're going to review the past performances at the end of the show and finalize selections and whatnot. And like I said, this is our early leans, so you know you can always uh, change your mind once you see what the weather's going to do and different things of that nature. It's been really nice here in Louisville. We had a storm come through the other night, but... It's been almost 70s. It did cool off a little bit, but it still feels pretty good outside. So uh, anyway, number two, Dancing Groom. I kind of feel the same way. Antonio Sano, Frankie DeTore's riding. Average races at best. Face some strong stakes company, but likely pass for me as well. So number three is an interesting horse to me. Lucky Jeremy. Uh, third place finish, Sunland Derby. William Moray is uh, the trainer. Uh, previously to that, won the Riley Allison Derby. Uh, and I think it's pretty decent contender. Jockey upgrade in Gerardo Corrales. I liked him in that Sunland Derby. He didn't get there for me, but I got my money back special on him. I took him just for the value of him. But he looked pretty good in that race. Didn't quite get there. Might be in contention, but I think he's kind of uh, just on that slightly outside looking in. Same for number four, noted, I think. Seventh place in the Kitten's Joy. Trainer is Todd Pletcher. Uh, previously did win the pulpit at Gulfstream. And I wouldn't be surprised. It might be a good long shot play. That and this other race kind of fit what we would need from him here. And this is the grade two uh, bourbon back at Keeneland on a mile in the 16th where he almost got there. He lost by a nose closing. Luis Saez is going to ride. So note it is kind of one to watch uh, watch out for, but uh, maybe just a little bit below. Now we get to the interesting part. I If you watch my preview video for the Louisiana Derby, I, I, I Agate Road is cross-entered. So that does make more sense to me. He's entered here at uh, horse number five. Ty Pletcher's turf to dirt hopeful. Uh, so my opinion was that I thought he's a better fit for this race. So maybe this is where they'll go. The second place in the D uh, Dania Beach with slower pace to run at. The last effort on the dirt at Tampa Bay chasing no more time. Didn't quite get there, but just ran out of real estate. He's directly in my crosshairs for a win bet here. Ty Pletcher is also 30% when moving from dirt to an all-weather track. Jose uh, Ortiz will stay aboard, so that's definitely one of my top choices. Number six, Northern Flame, is one I like a lot, too. That's trained by Kenny McPeak, and uh, veteran jockey Julian Leperu back in the ride. Seven starts as a two-year-old, only one win uh, back at Churchill Downs. Followed that up fourth in the Breeders' Cup Futurity at Keeneland. Uh, so he does look like he does his best running late, for a horse that likes to get out front, that's always a good quality to have. He was obviously no more no match for Timberlake 
in the Rebel, but there are no horses like Timberlake in this race, so that bumps his chances up. What he would be doing is getting out front and setting a reasonable pace and stealing it on the front end. So, number seven, Woodcourt. Uh, similar, uh, Cipriano Contreras, trainer. Luan Macado is the rider. He finished fourth behind Northern Flame in that Rebel. Uh, but I don't see enough speed. He he just uh, they were both right there around the turn if you watch them. But the two on the inside is is just looks better than the twelve on the outside coming home in that race. So I give the edge definitely to two similar horses, uh, giving the edge to Northern Flame there. Number eight's another interesting horse, Otello. Trainer Christopher Clement had some trip trouble and a strong Holy Bull field. Finished sixth. It was obviously caught up in that slow pace by Hades. He's more of a presser and a stalker. So uh, the Mucho Macho Man was much more to his liking. That win was pretty solid. New jockey Javier Castellano could change things up. Might be a live long shot. So I'm uh, going to keep an eye on that one. Another live one, number nine, sees the gray. Coming off a nice allowance win for trainer D. Wayne Lucas, the legend. Uh, you can't miss the white face down the stretch. Sees the gray uh, is a good-looking horse. He bored in slightly later on, but recovered to win it easily. Uh, he broke his maiden in the second start out. Third in a black-type stakes at Saratoga. Uh, fourth in the grade three Iroquois before the October start. Solid horse. That was a nice win coming off uh, on the allowance. So Seize the Gray could be poised for the GOAT, the legend, the coach, D. Wayne Lucas. Now, another, probably number two or one in 1A, 10 horse endlessly is Mike McCarthy, trained, uh, recently won the El Camino Real Derby at Golden Gate Park. Showed good late speed in the stretch. Mowed uh, down a pretty good horse in Topalo and then kept on rolling. Quality coat. Got some great uh, turf wins. Zuma Beach and uh, Del Mar Juvenile Turf Stakes. Both good races. Uh, and he does get my guy Umberto Rispoli in the saddle. Love the way that guy rides, especially on the turf. And, of course, this is all weather, but he he's just a good rider. He came through for me yesterday at Santa Anita on the turf. It didn't even look like, like he was in it. He was uh, buried, and then all of a sudden the window opened and he and he uh, weaved to the outside and got it done in the stretch to uh, kind of close out my weekend as a pretty nice one as far as the tote board goes. So appreciate him for that. Number 11, Baytown Chatterbox. No idea what to make of this one. I'm just passing. Uh, number 12 is West Saratoga. That's Larry Demerit. Uh, Jesus Castanon aboard. West Saratoga, good-looking horse. Very experienced in the field. He's faced some really strong uh, horses. Book him Dano. Uh, he got kind of blitzed by that horse in the Pasco Stakes in the back uh, before Book him Dano really uh, excelled. He kind of surprised everybody there as well. Then he chased no more time. That was both of those were at Tampa. Agate Road blew right by him in the stretch there. So I, I don't know what to make of that. He's kind of a cut below. I think he's he's on that tier with uh, Jeremy. I just uh, think he's not quite there. He's probably that horse that might get a piece, third, fourth, fifth place type of finish. So let's run through the uh, past performances before we get out of here. Okay, looking at the big board here, you can see endlessly, uh, obviously up there, Lucky Jeremy, Agate Road, powerful, best speed at the distance was uh, endlessly. They're going a mile and an eighth on the all-weather track, so that's uh, something to note as well. But like I said, I, I'm not really too hip on the first two. Lucky Jeremy uh, had that 92 speed figure at the Sun and uh, Sunland Derby was pretty solid throughout, just kind of faded a little in the stretch, but that's a mile and a 16th. So he's kind of, like I said, one of the, the tier two type of horses underneath my top two selections noted 
kind of as well. But the speed figures, you can see how low his speed figures are. Although the pulpit I mentioned, and then the bourbon, those two. Although he only got a seventy nine in the in the uh, bourbon, uh, he still closed late and uh, did almost got there. So he beat Dornock. Look at that, way back here in the sapling. So he's not a sucker horse. I, I'll keep an eye on the tote board. If it gets interesting, I, I, he's going to be included. He won't be listed on my suggest or selections at the end, but I will be looking closer as the week goes on. These are the kind of things I notice when I go back through and look. You don't always want to look for that very last race. This is kind of handicapping 101 type stuff. A lot of people just go, good God, seventh by seven. He was terrible. We're, we're not playing him. That was a grade three. But sometimes these races don't work out for horses. So you have to go back and look at other races that they might fit a little better in, you know, uh, or they ran a little better. They got better pace or whatever. So keep that in mind. There's Agate Road. The 91 and the Sam F. Davis closed to within a length almost of no more time. Just kind of ran out of real estate. Does get to stretch it out a little bit more. So that adds to my liking stone uh, sustained closer and, and making his second start. I mean, it's not dirt, it's all weather. So the dirt to all weather, like I said, Todd Pletcher, there it is, 30%. Uh, so he's my number one contender. Northern Flame, appreciate the 92 in the Rebel there. Uh, one by a neck in, the, in a large claimer here right before that, got an 87. On a on the good uh, Oaklawn track, so nice looking horse. So he's definitely in the mix. Woodcourt, like I said, step below Otello. This is the one I kind of want to look at. You can see he's eleventh in prime power. That's kind of a uh, not very good. But look at the 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 pace right here. This is first call, second call, minus twenty three, minus fifteen. That is if you get like a minus five or more that's a slow pace so to, for that to be a minus 23 and a minus 20 a minus 15 on the second call that's just you got no shot when you're trying to be a stalker so he was just even sixth place all the way across here uh Luis Saez jumps off we get Javier Castellano I don't know he did get bumped at the start and got caught three wide but he also had fierceness and domestic product in that race who are strong horses Hades we haven't seen since this race. So look out. This is the Mucho Macho Man. That is about an even pace. Plus two, plus four is very fair. Not fast at all, but even. He closed it. So keep that in mind. First World War came out and, and won his next out. You can see by the italics, that's what that means. So that's exiting kind of a key race type thing. Uh, so because you can see Otello there is uh, highlighted in uh, italics, and then he went out and won the next race. That's another part of looking at past performances that you want to pay attention to. Obviously, trainer, obviously, jockey. Uh, I like to look at the prime power. It gives me an idea, but this horse is better than 11th, in my opinion, so keep an eye on that one. Sees the gray, probably better than 9th. 92 uh, ran, I believe that was on Rebel Day, uh, D Wayne Lucas was dropping bombs on everybody. He had the big winner in the honeybee and, uh, everything like that. So he had a really nice day at Oakland, February, uh, last February. So arrogant is a good, you can see the sire up here. That's where they come from. A lot of times up here, you get, uh, some of this stuff. You can, you can actually Google it and it'll give you a graph to tell you different things on there. But a lot of this stuff is noise. A lot of it I don't pay a lot of attention to, but some of it I get in here and look at, okay, well, how's he do a second off layoff? Oh, not too good with winners, but he does hit the board a lot. Things of that nature uh, are important endlessly. This is the one, Michael McCarthy, sustained closer, 93 speed rating in this El Camino, and uh, he looked really strong down the stretch. He took it over. And uh, closed it out. So uh, I think it's a good looking horse. Doesn't have any experience on the turfway surface, but I don't believe Arrogant Road 
does either. So I'm not going to call that needing experience, but he's been around enough. He's done a, plenty of all weather and turf, you know, that type of stuff. So I'm fine with that. Baytown Chatterbox, like I said, then there's West Saratoga. He got the 85 in the Sam F. Davis. Uh, so I'm not, he should have been better than that against no more time, but it is what it is. He got blown out in the Pasco. That was Bookham Dano. So he might not be as bad. He ran up in the Futurity. That's locked the wine steward down here. So he's he's no stranger to competition. Then he's got back-to-back wins, the Iroquois, you know. So, but Risk It, who's turned out to be kind of a flop, uh, liberal arts, kind of a flop. So, you know, some of these races back here might not be as strong as they once were, but that's going to do it for the past performances. I hope you like that part of it. So, top choices, Arrogate Road one, two endlessly. Then uh, longer shots. I do like Otello. I think he, uh, if he gets a stronger pace, he's going to be there. He's got good speed figures. Clement's a great trainer. Northern Flame, good speed, could be hanging up. If the if the pace is to his liking where it's more of a uh, 50, half mile, I doubt it. I watched a couple of races from Turfway today. They were running 48s, 47s, halves. So I, I think we're going to be seeing off the pace getting it done. I'm not dismissing the coach, Dwayne Lucas, either. Sees the gray. So that's going to do it. You see the selections in the back. Be on the lookout for more great Kentucky Derby content. Best of luck this week. See you soon.